Good morning, YouTube followers. This is John Demokas, a.k.a. Half Man, Half Cichlids. We're obsessed as an aquarium community with nitrates. And uh, I think a lot of our focus and emphasis on nitrates is misplaced. And uh, today is part one of uh, a series where I'm going to convince you that we're obsessed with nitrates and that there are other avenues we have to look at to have a pristine water in our glass box. So what I'd like to uh, get across, and by the way I'm a biologist and one of my challenges here will be making the points simple so that you can understand them and that uh, this impacts uh, your fish keeping to a positive direction. So again, my challenges are to convince you that co nitrogen compounds, which includes nitrates, are not the only chemicals that accumulate in our glass boxes. There are other things that we'll talk about. And not all of them are good. Some, for example, are worse than uh, nitrates and that we ignore them. Secondarily, we are, which I just touched on, we're far too fixated on reducing nitrates. We've even, even taken as far as having major emphasis in the hobby on denitrification, deep sand beds, biosynosis baskets, BCBs, I believe they're called, uh, porous media like biohome. Uh, we're obsessed with it. I know personally, based on experience in the biology, I don't believe any of those denitrification processes that I just mentioned work to any significant degree for most Aquarius. And lastly, I need to convince you that having pristine, at least more so than you probably have today, having pristine water quality in your aquarium is achievable, but not through this overemphasis, not through this obsession with nitrates. So I look forward to your input and your questions, and they will be important in, in uh, the second uh, video I make on this subject, R2. Let's go ahead. Thank you. It's very important to mention that there are a number of sources of chemical and other pollution that enter the water in our aquariums. Uh, for myself, uh, my observations, fish metabolism is by far the greatest source of these chemicals I will talk about. But there's also uneaten food. There's also what comes with the water from our tap, whether it's from wells or city water, plants, uh, bacterial byproducts, including nitrogen cycle, and also equipment and decorations, which can give off everything from microplastics to uh, cellulose in the case of uh, driftwood. In this presentation, I will be talking primarily about the metabolic waste from our aqu aquarium inhabitants. Again, I believe this is the, the largest source of chemicals and other pollutants. But let's just take a look at, uh, in this case, an African cichlid and, and see what the sources are of uh, those pollutants and contaminants and chemicals. There's a fish respiration where the gills of the fish interact with the water in the aquarium 
and things like urea and uh, ammonia are given off. There's also, of course, fish urine and fish feces. So it's important to note that uh, it's not just from the fish feces that we get pollutants in the aquarium, which are most obvious to most uh, people. When we think of fish waste products, we primarily think of protein metabolism and ammonia, nitrite, and nitrate. The, uh, the importance of this slide is to make the point that there are a number of other chemicals and pollutants that uh, enter our aquariums from uh, the fish waste products, from the products of their metabolism. And putting these into uh, these chemicals into four broad categories, we have those that are growth inhibiting, that slow down the growth of our fish. There's uh, metals, including heavy metals, and there's also macro nutrients. And I'll talk more about uh, what's included with each of these uh, broad categories. But again, the point is. It's not just the waste products from protein metabolism. There's other things going on. There's other pollutants entering our aquariums from fish uh, waste products. Here is where here I will try to not get uh, too technical and put anybody asleep, but uh, and give some examples of what's in each of these uh, four broad categories, but. Growth inhibiting fish typically give off hormones. An example is cortisol. There's uh, metabolites from uh, bacterial action. There's heavy metals that uh, fish give off that uh, have accumulated from the water from from fish food, for example. Uh, there's a number of metals that uh, enter our aquariums. Uh, I've them listed here, everything from arsenic to cadmium, cobalt, zinc, copper, even lead and mercury are possibilities that enter the system. Then there's protein metabolism, which most of us are familiar with, where uh, proteins break down into ammonia and amino acids, and of course nitrates, uh, nitrites and nitrates, urea, creatine, and uh, creatinine, which are all part of uh, protein metabolism and that enter the nitrogen cycle. And last but not least, there's uh, macronutrients such as phosphorus, pota potassium, calcium, and magnesium. And uh, uh, these come from uh, the fish food to a large extent. I think we'd be surprised at how much phosphorus can accumulate in our aquariums. Uh, and even uh, calcium and, manat and magnesium from uh, the food that we feed our fish and other sources. As I mentioned, we're all familiar with uh, the nitrogen cycle, which I have uh, uh, expressed here in this slide. And uh, just want to make the point again that uh, the Nitrogen cycle is really a, kind of a cleanup cycle, but again, it only addresses the, the uh, protein and nitrogen containing compounds that are in our aquarium systems. Everything else is still, uh, uh, still floating in our aquarium, and we have to look to, for other means to get rid of uh, those other those other uh, pollutants and contaminants in our aquarium system. Last slide, I promise you. What are the key points of part one obsessed with nitrates? First point, there are chemicals other than nitrogen compounds that accumulate in our aquarium. Remember the four different categories that uh, I outlined. Number two, it's my belief we are far too fixated on reducing nitrates. There are some folks who believe that by having a effective nitrogen and even an, an effective denitri 
purification cycles that that they are purifying adequately purifying the water in their aquarium. This is not the case, and and uh, I hope uh, this understanding will come uh, with time. And last but not least, and uh, again, this we'll get into we'll get into later in the series. Achieving pristine aquarium water is achievable, but again, we have to go beyond just the nitrogen and the denitrification cycles. So again, I hope you'll join me for uh, part two. I hope this uh, made sense. I look forward to your leaving your uh, provocative questions that can help me formulate and answer some of those questions in part two. Thank you.